Hello, everybody. Welcome to Waiter to Win National Women's Day. Great to be with you. I've uh, got Daryl Marie alongside me. We'll introduce him in just a moment. But uh, today we celebrate the ladies and uh, may everybody have a wonderful day. We're out at Turfentine after a very quiet day yesterday. No local racing on a Monday, but uh, we're on the standside track for Turfentine Racing. An eight race program will be coming your way. And uh, the bar bottle starts in race one, the PA race two, pick six, race three, and the jackpot race four will be the first jackpot and the second jackpot. Jackpot race number five. Uh, don't forget that uh, you can catch all our action on uh, various social media platforms. You've got the option of Twitter. Uh, the WhatsApp number will be on your screen as well. And uh, all the action will be uploaded onto YouTube as well, which is fantastic. So you don't miss a heartbeat and you'll be able to watch all the action on Channel 240 on DSTV as well. So with that, I'm going to introduce our guest today. Uh, just one guest because uh, unfortunately Darren Burrows has come down sick. Uh, he's under the stick and uh, we hope that he recovers covers quickly and Daryl Marie is recovering after coming under a hard ride and um, good to have you with us uh, Daryl obviously uh, there's a lot of flu going around at the moment and uh, you up and running still a bit uh, yeah. sneezing coughing but uh, you're getting get better too close don't get too close <laughs> Brandon. Um, no, yeah but uh, let's hope I can hold the fort and tip a few winners uh, certainly be trying my best all right, beautiful stuff. Uh, it's an eight-race program, so I'm not going to waste any time. Just take note that uh, Randall Simons and J.P. van der Merwe will not be riding at today's meeting, being a public holiday. Uh, Clyde Basil, the voice of South African horse racing, will be calling at the Big T, and I believe Lyle Cooper will be on the ground getting all the um, information that we need from various trainers and jockeys. All right, so going into the first race, it does look to be a favourite over here, Daryl. I think this will also be hard to beat Silver Winter. Uh, good run last time out against some strong sorts horse to beat she could be the horse to beat so uh, she shows good pace and then tends to be found wanting in the latter stages they put a, a pair of blinkers on her this time around and gavin Lorena takes the ride uh brandon uh, the form line has been franked with jen quinn winning from there uh, i don't think they'll ever pray it again to be quite honest i think uh, silver winter is limited she may get away with a win today, but I don't think she's certainly going to Hollywood. Um, I've played to beat her in the bar pot. Uh, a few of the viewers are going to be frowning, but uh, she, she certainly is the filly to beat. But Miss Soho, uh, not too far behind her on a form line behind, what was it, uh, on debut behind Stormy Lass. She's got a few lengths to make up. Then Nelly Bly certainly improved with the art, the blinkers. She is held by the favorite, but on that occasion, she wore the blinkers. She's limited herself. But I think the improver in the pack has to be number seven, Heartlight. Now, she drops back down to her five furlongs. A set of blinkers got on her. I think she could feature over here. So I'm playing to beat the favorite. I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see her try type of year, but I'm hoping to get a result. All right, so that's Silver Winter, the early betting over there, the anti-post betting, if I can put it like that, uh, 9 to 20. So maybe a bit skinny. I know that uh, Pete Bunzai, as I call him, or Pete Bunzai, as he's uh, affectionately known, obviously a great man and uh, he enjoys his racing. He's got some lovely horses, one of them being a Legion Chief and many others in racing. He'll be on course, Silver Winter, the horse for uh, many of us. I think uh, we'll try and bank of this one. And if you're playing to beat it, all the best. But we'll go and look at selections quickly. Let's have a look and see what's happening over here and uh, what are we going to do in terms of race number one it's over 1000 meters uh, there's the bar pots um this is daryl marie's bar pot i'm gonna put it there because um i think he's played it right i mean if you beat silver winter yeah daryl um you're probably gonna be in for a big payout already uh, and if we don't beat so i'm more than certain that we're gonna double up um and i've played quite thin thereafter so hopefully we do get the results where we where we've opted to go wide and uh Let's hope we're in the winner's enclosure. All right, so just to recap those numbers, four, five, six, seven, and eight in the first leg, second leg, five and 10, third leg, two and four, fourth leg will be three and four, fifth leg, two and seven, and the last leg being two and five. 320 Rand gives it to you twice. There's that uh, code, scan the bet. It'll take you to tab4racing.com, and that's where you can strike the bet for as much as you want to spend on this public holiday. But more importantly, it kicks off the bar pot race number one, and those bets must be on but 12.50.
Place Accumulator starts in race number two and uh, well named over here, the Bridget Oppenheimer maiden qualified plates over 1,000 meters. Just quickly to have a look at the betting over here, I like to give the anti-post betting so that the viewers can follow right up to race time. The favorites number 10 above the world at 17 to 10, uh, five Lebanese pound at 19 to 10 and at six to one about Beltway, seven to one and better bar those. Uh, Daryl's gonna try and help us over here. I think it's a very open race above the world, Lebanese pound, uh, they both look to have live Lovely chances. Absolutely. Now, above the world represents the same form line as Silver Winter. So watch how she goes in the first. We've touched on the winner from that form line in Jinquin. She returned from a four and a half month layoff last time out and uh, showed a lot of pace, just tied very late. There's no doubt she's going to strip fitter. And then the obvious danger has to be number five, Lebanese Pound. Now, they have met in the past, Brandon. Uh, above the world was having her third start. Lebanese Pound was making his debut behind the cool winter run. Uh, I think there's only a length and a half separating them and Lebanese pound is one and a half kgs better off. So I think there is a possibility that he can reverse that form. Um, he was having his first run as a gelding last time out. I watched that race. He wasn't tiring at the end. Um, he was staying on. So I think there is some scope for improvement. I'm going to lean towards him over the favorite. All right, beautiful stuff. Um, so that's uh, the first leg of the place accumulator. And uh, another name in racing, that's a female celebrating the ladies today is Brittany Maestri and she's uh, got Lebanese pound yeah, those are the silks of the white and pink so we wish them all the best over here with the source today let's jump into selections quickly it is the first leg of the place accumulator there is the PA up on your screen first leg five and ten second leg two and four third leg three and four fourth leg two and seven fifth leg will be two and five by banker one in leg six and then the last leg being leg seven four six and seven and 192 rand we'll give it to you twice you can scan that bet place accumulator time we're looking for a big pool on this public holiday and those bets must be on by 1325. The big one this afternoon is the pick six, ladies and gentlemen. We're looking for a really good pool, so get those bets on. Two o'clock for race number three. It's over 1160 meters and a cracking race coming up. I just want to give the guys the anti-post betting right up until the show was recorded. Uh, I would advise that you watch the betting right up until race time. Get the comments from Lyle Cooper. Having a look at this race over here, the favorite is far away winter, nine to 10, number four. Uh, two Tuscan winters at 16 to 10, and you can write your price about the rest of them. So two horses dominating. Let's go over to Daryl Marie. Daryl does look to be a two-horse race. Obviously, I called the race last time out with Far Away Winter. Put the record straight. Uh, mighty impressive. Nice turn of foot. And Galding, I think, did the trick. Absolutely. I mean, like you say, he set the record straight. Uh, Brandon, you know, prior to that race, the, the comments were very, very bullish. Uh, he was putting up top-class work back home. So he's obviously got a, a loaded with ability. Now, on that occasion... There were a few over there that had lightning early pace and he wasn't lacked for early toe. He was right up there and he still quickened. One, many are going to say he didn't beat the strongest of fields, but you can't read into that because it was the manner in which he got it, uh, the job done that was impressive. He beat a horse like Varticus by a good few lengths, so I think by four odd lengths. Now Varticus has run second or third to some decent sorts in the past. Profit came out and won again. Um, who else? I wrote them down. Uh, Tarkenort, Spielberg. So if he's got ability, he can certainly go on with it. I don't think the step up in trip is going to be a negative because he's damn one over 1400. His full sister has got a mile. So if he just settles and quickens, he, he could go back to back of here. But there is a danger in Tuscan winter. Now that stable's going along very well. I think uh, they are lost 20 odd runners that they've settled. Uh, six of them have won. Goes extremely well over this course and distance. And if for some unknown reason the favorite comes up for air over that last furlong, he'll be doing his best work late. And one thing's for sure, he'll be staying on best of all. So I'm making the immediate danger, number two, Tuscan Winter. Give us a confidence, Daryl. Help us. Nine to ten. Is it a bit short? I know 90 straight off the bat is probably a little bit harsh being a three-year-old, but um, we'll have to see. I mean, we've got to try and beat the handicapper. What would you say? I mean, nine to ten a bit skinny or can we dive in? Um, I'm not going to be having a bet. Uh, I'd like, love to give the viewers some confidence and say that I'm bullish going into this race. But do you know, Tuscan Winter's got ability. He's no slouch and he's better weighted. So 
I've got healthy respect for him. All right. So uh, in between the lines, I think it's a match race. I think uh, the punters will agree with us. Let's go and have a look quickly and see what the guys are going to do over here when it comes to the first leg of the pick six. There's the selections on your screen. They are going to tip us a pick six, which is wonderful news. Like I said, I think we'll get over a million rand on this public holiday. Two and four in the first leg, by three, four, six and eight, by one, two, four, five and seven, by two and five, by banker one. And the big F at the back, field for leg six and the spend is 700 and 20 rand we're gonna have a look at a rerun over here far away winter the blue you'll spot that one cruising towards the middle outside big white blaze really goes on to win a nice race diego de gavea has hardly moved a muscle on this individual remember all the money for this horse first time the dogs were barking in a big way the rumor was unbeatable and uh, they galded him subsequently and he went on to put in this performance and you can see diego just nursing him up towards the last 200 meters no require of the stick just going to punch him out now and uh, you'll have a sneaky look around and you'll see that he's got the race sewn up he looks to be a smart horse far away winter and we know that michael and adam as have always uh, thought quite a bit of this individual let's see if he can go bang bang it's the first leg of the pick six and those bets must be on by two o'clock 1440 is the start of jackpot one at the big t today in a very open race one might add i just want to have a look at the anti-post betting over here quickly i see baby don't hurt me at the top of the betting boards 28 to 10 four twice as wild at seven to two letitia's angel number eight at four to one and then it's nine to two about feather the nest and eight to one and better bar those wide open i'm going to need the help of daryl marie over here daryl does look to be an open race there's one or two that uh, are hard hitters they've been there done that got the t-shirts but i know chatting off here you very much in favor of feather the nest i am brandon and i'll tell you why um go back to the run on the 10th of may now you'll see she's i think seven kilograms better off with scott Tedito for a two-length beating so on paper one has to believe she's going to reverse that form and in that uh, same very race she holds the filly called letitia's angel now Letitia's Angel twice as wild and baby don't hurt me there's very very little separating them on form so I'm leaning towards Feather the Nest in a penultimate start of the six furlongs she came out strong she was overdoing it I'm just hoping she can relax in running because she does get the the 11 so I make her the filly to beat uh, or the mare uh, now Letitia's Angel she found good form last time out Roger the Dodger ran extremely well in his next start I think he ran second uh, to frontline fighter and then baby don't hurt me she's off a very competitive mark she's finished close up of a 66 a 65 she's now 64 if you like her chances you have to give a, a winning chance to twice as well who finished right alongside her so it is a Phillies and mares handicap but i'm leaning towards feather the nest as the right one okay so there you go some value nine to two about feather the nest she's a hold up horse so you've got to try and produce her as late as possible and uh, we'll be watching her closely all right so let's go and see what's happened with selections over here being the first leg of the jackpot uh, the jackpot one comes up in race number four and there's the tips for you three four six and eight in the first leg second leg one two four five and seven third leg two and five and they're going to bank her number one in leg number four 200 rand gives it to you five times not forgetting about that code you just open up your cameras, walk up to the screen, scan the code, and it will take you to the tab4racing.com website where you'll be able to strike your bets accordingly. But more importantly, 1440 is the call time for race number four, and it does kick off our first jackpot. Ten past three kicks off our second jackpot, and I like the look of this bet. It is over 2,000 meters. A very open sort of a race because um, there's one or two that have put their hands up for improvements, and uh, I just want to give the guys again the betting. I think important to use this as some sort of a guide. You've got number one, the brief at 19 to 10. Uh, seven, Banner Bridge at two to one. Five, Pottinger's gone 28 to 10, and it's nine to two, and better bar those. Let's go over to Daryl Marie. What are we doing over here, Dar? Obviously, um, a race where there's one or two that have had hard luck stories in their last few starts. Do you like the brief? Um, you know, if you like the brief, you have to have health respect for Banner Bridge. I think he's four kilograms better, better for a length and a half beating. So, you know, Banner Bridge in his penultimate start, he was desperately unlucky. You recall he got done on the fence. Then last time out, he went in between runners. He was very hesitant. Once he got into the clear, he did good work late. In such a small field, there's one thing that's going to be certain. He's not going to be unlucky in running over here. He'll have every opportunity to set the record straight. Course and distance winner. 
But uh, Brandon, you know, I'm leaning towards number two over here, immeasurable. Now, he hates the soft. Zero from four on the sticky, stick, in sticky conditions. There's no pace over here. He's going to go up. He's going to, he's the likely pacemaker over here. Two from three over the 10 furlongs. If he gets his fractions right up front, I think he could be the one to beat over here. Um, and we saw that form line being frank with the elusive swan. And then obviously the brief, you know, since being up to in trip, he's done nothing wrong. And Pottinger, he's four kilograms better off with the brief. So there shouldn't be much separating them on paper. But the, but the way I, I see this race being run, I think it could be, could be measurables to lose. I think he'll be given every opportunity. All right, so immeasurable. A horse that likes to go off and dictate matters. You can hear some sort of confidence in between uh, the lines over there with immeasurable. Like you heard it, he doesn't like the sticky conditions. And if he's allowed to free will, he could be hard to beat. A magnificent day here in Johannesburg and uh, conditions will suit immeasurable over here. The brief must be some sort of a run. And then Banner Bridge has been a bit unlucky in his last few starts. So an open race. Let's go and look at the selections courtesy of the waiter to win team. Jackpot two starts now race number five. First leg, one, two, four, five, and seven. Second leg, two and five. Third leg, banker one, and leg four, no chances being taken. The same as the pick six. We're going to go big F over there, and that's filled. 180 Rand gives it to you twice. There's that code once again. Scan the bet. Let's get involved. Like I said, the pools are going to be wonderful. I think guys will be giving this meeting a full go. There's one or two nice value bets to be had, but get those jackpot two bets on. Ten past three is the call time. On to race six we go, 1540, and this is over 1600 meters, and a very good race, I might add. There's one or two that are putting their hands up uh, to return back to form. I just want to have a look at the betting quickly. It does look to be quite open. If you look past uh, number one, About to Storm, is your two to one favorite. Uh, three Karapi has gone about, uh, say, 33 to 10, may even drift race time. Uh, five Wandering Star at 33 to 10, two High Moon at four to one. At six to one, number six, Lord of Light, and then the Four Horse West Point is at 12 to 1. So small field, quite competitive. Daryl Marie is here to help us. Does look to be open, about to storm. A horse that um, on its day certainly has the ability to win a race of this nature. I see there's a bit of money for Karapi and I can see why because Musi Yeni and Paul Peter, they've been in wonderful form at the moment and uh, long may it continue. Absolutely. Um, the two that you haven't done, don't uh, feature my top two selections. That's how competitive the small field is. I'm leaning towards number two over here, High Moon. Now I was very impressed with his local debut, Brandon. That was on the inside track. He had a very wide draw to contend with and that just opted to give him a chance. He slotted in and he ran on extremely well. Considering that he was carrying 61 and a half kilograms, I thought that was a cracking effort. Now one thing's for certain, he's gonna strip fitter. He's gonna appreciate the longer running. A tongue tie gets fitted for the first time. And I think he's going to make marked improvements on that effort. I think he's, he, he should be right there at the finish. And then you got the likes of number five, Wandering Star. Now, last time out, the race went pear-shaped from the jump. Um, everything went wrong, and I thought he did extremely well to finish where he did. That form line has been franked with legislate stance winning once again from there. And a few runs back when he ran second, he picked up a four-pound penalty here. Now you can see he's come back down to that original mark and you have to believe he's going to be very, very competitive. So High Moon to kick on from his local danger uh, debut and then the danger I'll make wandering uh, star, uh, two from five. Okay, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell. It does look to be open. 15.40 is race time for race number six. Let's go and have a look at these selections over here, courtesy of the Waiter to Win team. No Darren Burrows, unfortunately, who is sick at the moment. Uh, so what we're going to do is try and put our heads together. Trifecta double floating is what's been tipped over here. Just having a look. Um, two and five by field. 240 Rand, 10 times. I think that's the right way to play over here. I'm just having a look at the race. I don't like it. I think it's very, very open. You probably find that uh, you may have to go the big F in a race like this for exotic purposes. By this time, it's too late. You'll know your fates already. But 1,600 meters is the trip. 1540 is the off time. Get those bets on. Scan the codes. And let's enjoy it. I think a horse that must have a big chance over here is Wandering Star, who was oh so unlucky last time out. And we'll be looking for a big run from that one. 
All right, so we're on to the penultimate. This will be race number seven. Ten past four is the off time. I'm having a look at the betting, and there's already been early support over here for a horse called Van der Bilt, who's done nothing wrong since arriving in Johannesburg. 12 to 10 favorite now. Muzieni runs for Paul Peter. Two Eskimo Pies gone four to one. Duke of Sussex at four to one. And Clabisi running again four to one in the market. Honest as they come, and it's 13 to two and better bar those. Let's go over to Daryl Marie. Let's see what he likes over here. I know that uh, we've got a coffee on the ride. I'm going to take him on over here. I think Vanderbilt almost impossible to beat. You like a bit of Duke of Sussex. Um, does look to be um, in good form at the moment. Last two wins have been impressive. Match race? Uh, I don't believe it's a match race, uh, Brennan. Um, you know, you just have to wonder with regards to the betting of here. Because on paper, you've got the likes of number five, Ntrabisi, who on the 9th of June run was only beaten by a neck by Vanderbilt. And he's eight and a half kilograms better off. You got the one at 12 to 10 and the other at four to one. Surely there shouldn't be such a big uh, of a dis discrepancy in the market. Now there is a form update for Mkabisi. He ran second behind Legislate Stance, beaten uh, a length. He's in good form. Now Vanderbilt, uh, how can you fault his recent form on the half felt? His latest one was his best to date. The handicap of Woodso too, he got lumped with an eight pound penalty. So you can't really uh, have any negative besides the fact that he's gone up in the ratings. But I was super impressed with Duke of Sussex's last win. And you know, he beat a decent sort in Wafif. He's on the upgrade himself. He's a decent, uh, he's above average sort. And he put him to bed last time out. He was dropped in from a wide draw. Uh, it was his second run after a rest. Uh, and he quick non bar. I thought that was an eye catching one. My, my reservation with regards to Duke of Sussex is the Turfentine uh, track. He tends to run his best races at the Vol. They tried him over further in the past and he didn't uh, seem to get it. He's best around about, about the mile uh, distance. So I'm really bullish on his chances. I'm going against the grain over here. I'm making Duke of Sussex the one to beat. And I'm actually going to tip Eskimo Pa back in second. Now he's two kilograms better off for a length beating. But uh, Duke of Sussex came from behind him last time out and he ran on by. So I, this time around I see from a draw, uh, draw reversal, I think Duke of Sussex will be ahead of him and hold his measure. So for me, like I said, Duke of, Duke of Sussex represents a value in this race. Do you see um, Vanderbilt uh, going to the front? Uh, I do. Day? I do. Probably. And, um, you know, the stand side, uh, it is a mile, but the track's running quick. So he'll, be a, he'll have every, every opportunity to make it four in a row. But I'm playing to beat him, Brandon. Okay. Uh, so what do we have on the line of here? Whatever you want. I can tell you what, if you do win with Duke of Sussex, you've got a Jägermaster from uh, Davy Shaw. But uh, from my side, whatever you want. Okay, we're on. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Match race on. I'm going Vanderbilt to beat Duke of Sussex. Daryl Marie is going to go Duke of Sussex to beat Eskimo Pie. And um, he thinks only Vanderbilt's uh, languishing in behind that. So we'll chat after the race. But let's go and have a look at selections quickly. Let's go and see what's happening over here when it comes to race number seven. Straight win and there's value to be had. Duke of Sussex win. That'll be at about four to one, maybe shorten up after Daryl Marie's finished with the show. So get those bets on as soon as uh, possible. We've got a rerun to show you as well. Let's go and join this rerun. Let's go and see what happened. Uh, you can see Duke of Sussex, the sheepskin noseband, the orange jacket towards the back of the field, the Davy Shaw silks. On the inside is Wafif, who's starting to run home smartly. I think it's Let's Do It in front. Back to Black is in second in the Johnny Finlayson silks. And this is Leopold, who's racing with the black and the green cap. And you can see Duke of Sussex now starting to weave a passage in between horses. Just under the hands, Craig Zaki now punches this one out, gets the gap, switches towards the inside. After watching this rerun, I might be in a bit of trouble. I didn't realize there were one or two traffic problems uh, last time out and actually won a tad cozily. But that's pretty much the race, race seven. Ten past four, get those bets on. That's the penultimate on today's eight race program. We wrap up this public holiday meeting at 16.40 from Turfentine Racecourse. I'm just having a look at the betting once again. Uh, Six Silver Stardust, been well back 13 to 10 in the market. And uh, this is Gavin Larina for Paul Peter. Three Thumbies at 15 to 4. One Iceman Cometh. They landed the gamble last time, 8 to 1. Seven Freedom of Choice at 8 to 1. And it's 10 to 1 and better bar those. Let's go over to Daryl Marie. Let's see if he's in favor of Silver Stardust. Well backed. And we need to respect the money now trading at 13 to 10. 
Absolutely. He's got a lot in his favour, Brandon. You know, last time out he was pulling. So I think the drop in trip is going to be in his favour. He's going to strip fitter, having his second run after a gelding. He's drawn one. Uh, he should really get the run of the race and uh, be no surprise to see him get the job done this time around. I've got respect for the stable companion now, freedom of choice. Uh, have a look at her rating. It's plummeted from an 88, I think, down to a 68. And despite that, uh, she still comes into this race joint best weighted. Um, you can put a line through her last starts. Obviously, she, she lost the jockey. She clipped heels. But I think if she goes forward, I'd be no surprise, to, for me at least, to see her hold the stable companion at bay. I think she is capable. And then one you want to throw into your trifectas and swingers has to be number four, Southern Blaze. Now, he is a course and distance winner. He did improve last time out. And I think if they do go very, very quick and he's able to settle in running, he'll be doing his best work late and could uh, fill a trifecta position over here. But I do think the Paul Peter outfit will dominate. All right, short and sweet. So Daryl Marie looking to go with the favourites over here and the lucky last. Does look to be the right one, Silver Stardust, and uh, should get the best run in transit. And uh, hopefully the punters will walk away on this public holiday with a few rands in their back pockets. All right, so let's look at the selections quickly. Let's see what's happening. Uh, swinger boxed, four, six, and seven. Four, six, and seven. Swinger boxed, 150 rand, gives it to you 50 times. And there's that code again for you can just scan the bets and try try and strike those bets for as much as you possibly can. Dependent on what sort of afternoon you've had, you can choose how much you want to take that swinger boxed for. All right, so it's been a great pleasure being with you. Obviously, uh, we celebrate all the ladies today. There's so many in racing and uh, we really appreciate them. A big thank you to my guest, Daryl Marie. Um, he'll obviously say goodbye to him in just a moment, but just remember, ladies and gentlemen, that you can catch all our selections and our shows on various social media platforms. You've got that option, our WhatsApp numbers there. We'd love to engage with you and then obviously Twitter and you can uh, see all the videos you won't miss a heartbeat on YouTube or channel 240 so it's been great being with you thanks very much to Daryl Marie thanks there it's uh, really been a pleasure like I keep saying and uh, we wax lyrical about it because uh, even though we take the punishment sometimes you guys put a lot of hard work in I know it's not easy trying to tip every win in every race and I think your strike rate's been pretty good uh, let's hope that uh, we pointed our viewers in the right direction today, Brandon. Uh, but anything planned for National Women's Day? Absolutely nothing. Um, the missus will be going racing and maybe she'll take me for dinner. Uh, let's hope so, uh, because uh, I think uh, you're in trouble coming after the seventh race, so she'll have to pay. <laughs> Thank you very much to Daryl Marie. Always a great pleasure being with him. Fantastic. A uh, real form studier, and uh, we enjoy his, uh, his analysts and uh, all everything that he puts into the sport of racing. No Darren Burrows. We wish him a speedy recovery. Cloud will be back in the hot seats shortly, and um, a big thank you to him for giving me this opportunity. But from all of us here at the Waiter to Win team, be safe, hit them hard, and that's all about the ladies today. Enjoy what's still to come. We'll chat again soon. Bye-bye.